So as I was showing you there, the seats uh, pretty much recline all the way back so you can take a nap there while you're flying, or at least uh, you know one person can and the other one can stay flying there. So uh, yeah, that's most of the cabin there. Let me just show you uh, as well the rudder pedals under here. So the rudder pedals um, are adjustable. It's a bit difficult to see, uh, but I have pins in here and I've shown it in previous videos that allow you to uh, adjust the, rud the rudder pedals through about six inches of travel. So, you know, if you have uh, longer legs, you can adjust them so they're further back uh, away from you. And if you have shorter legs, you can bring them forward. So in combination with that and um, moving the seat, you know, you have quite a lot of adjustment. And then back under here, you actually have a Behringer a little controller there for the, um, the sort of anti-locking on the brakes. And it's just sort of like a manual pressure thing. So the maximum, you can just dial in the maximum pressure for the brakes there. So it's uh, less likely uh, to lock up the brakes if you push too hard. And then under there you can see uh, this is the autopilot servo there for the aileron controls and the other one for the elevator is back under there as well. We don't have any autopilot for your damper. I don't think it's necessary on this canard style aircraft. Uh, but we'll see and it's something you know we could add later on if we needed to. Okay so up in the nose compartment I'll go through what we have here. Uh, so just looking down in here this is where the battery is down in here. And it's a fairly small lightweight battery 21 pounds. Uh, and then I have um, a solenoid um, sort of actuator there to turn on the ship's power. And that basically just, you know, lights up everything um, through the battery there. And then we have uh, different pass-throughs here for uh, main power and then the main ground going into the cabin. And then here you have the, uh, these are the elevator controls coming through here with a bell crank. And then that goes through uh, this control here through the bulkhead. And have these three different ways of uh, controlling the aircraft, your elevator and your aileron and your rudder and they're all done with these sort of pivotal things because of the pressurization. Um, it's a good way to use those so you don't have to worry about um, air leaking out through those uh, those controls going through the, uh, the cabin pressure system. And um, here we have the outflow valves for the pressurization system. So there's two of those, and we're using an Enviro Systems um, pressurization controller on there to handle that. And there's your uh, um, master brake cylinders there for the brakes. So you can top those up if you get low on uh, brake fluid. And then they run down through into the cabin because there's a parking brake in the cabin there. Um, and then obviously the brakes are in the cabin. And then from there, the brake controls come back out and run down uh, through the keel to the brakes system as well. And then in here you can see this is the, um, the uh, hydraulic strut for retracting the nose gear. And there's the hydraulic uh, hoses there for that. And this is the obviously the main front spar for the foreplane here that gives the foreplane its strength. And there's the main spar for that there. And that's basically just bolted on. This one has a bolt there and the same on the other side. And then the front one has bolts here. And on the other side, so just four bolts holding that on. And on the other side, down in there, this is the uh, pump for the gear retraction system. And it's an electrically operated hydraulic pump. And then the various different hoses there that hook to the lines to that to run the hydraulic cylinders. And that's just a manifold there. And we have hydraulic uh, a sort of a pressure switches here. So it automatically cuts off when it gets up to enough pressure, either holding it up or locking it down. So that's pretty much it, and there's a little another a little relay down below there, which handles uh, the switching of the electrical system for the uh, gear pump. So that's most of what's going on there, and uh, up in the nose there we have some ballast there right now. There's 100 pounds of ballast for testing. I'm not sure if we're going to need all that, but we'll see. And uh, up here we have the, um, the GPS antenna with a little aluminum um, ground plane. And again, the whole aircraft is all carbon fiber, but there's certain places like here where we've got like a fiberglass window because uh, carbon fiber will you know, block any uh, antenna signals, whereas fiberglass won't. So that's why we have that. And probably for production, we probably will make this nose thing out of uh, fiberglass instead of having to have a cutout window in there and a little gas strut just holding it so it stays open when you open it up. And two pins up in here that lock in under here to these little uh, strike plates just to hold it shut. And a couple other things, so you got the avionics, uh, all the wiring and stuff pass through in here into the cabin. So again, these are all pressure tight. 
Uh, you've got antenna lines here and you've got all the different uh, wiring runs here for, you know, things like, you know, lighting and all the stuff going back to the, the, um, the engine and the ECU and all that sort of stuff. And then here's the pressure switch for um, the uh, landing gear system. So uh, that hooks up to the pitot tube, which is down in here with the cover on right now. So not, it's not until you get to 85 knots that this little switch here will, will turn on. And when that turns on, uh, it'll allow the landing gear to retract. And I've still got to wire that up in here. I've just got that disconnected right now because I'm just going to wire it up when I do my final testing on the gear. I want to put it back on the blocks and we can actually cycle the gear. And that little relay under there, that's for the um, heater for the pedo system which lives inside of the uh, foreplane in there. And we have a magnetometer that's uh, hidden up in under here. And uh, that gives us our heading direction. And yeah, that's probably most of what's going on up in the nose here. And back up in the nose here, looking through the nose gear hatch, you can see there's uh, the keel that runs down through the center of the aircraft there, and there's all kinds of things happening down there. So um, first thing that you're probably looking at there is those cables, those are antenna cables that are running down to the antennas that are under the uh, aircraft. And then there's also another one running on the left side there to the wireless hotspot I have in there. So this thing has internet access, so you can access it remotely. Um, and then we have the uh, lines here running for the heater and the air conditioning system. They run down the keel to the engine. And then we also have uh, you know, your main power lines over there on the left, the um, battery positive and negative running down to the engine and all the rest of the wiring over there on the right hand side and everything runs through conduit so it all stays in place down through the keel. And back behind there, you can I don't know if you can see, there's a wheel, sort of a gold colored wheel back there. That's a wheel that turns the cable system for the aileron controls and they run back through uh, into the wings and I'll show you those in a little bit. And then looking forward here, this is where you have your retraction system for the nose gear, the sort of arm sort of pivots there when the uh, hydraulic strut moves there and that retracts the nose gear up into the nose. And the doors close automatically because this the main tire there, that guy there hits this wheel here and that can pivot and when that pivots it basically pulls the doors shut and they can't shut right now because they touch the lights um, but you don't want them to shut until the gears almost in and they have a spring on them so they're spring loaded so when the gear comes down they automatically come open so yeah that's pretty much uh, everything that's going on and there's your uh, those are all the air conditioning and heater lines running through there into the cabin again everything has to go through the pressure bulkhead so you have to make sure that you have everything airtight um, so that's why I have all the bulkhead pass through is so that's pretty much everything uh, up under the nose there that I, think, that I can think of. And back in the cabin here we have these openings here that uh, go into the compartment there where all the uh, landing gear, the main landing gear retraction stuff is in. That's what you're looking at. That's one of the cylinders there for retracting uh, the main gear leg and its mounting bracket there. And there's also a gas strut there below it that will automatically push that down um, if the gear fails and you can't... Uh, retract it or you can't put it down you just basically uh, relieve the pressure on the system with the dump valve and those gas struts will push the gear down and then uh, below that there's actually um, a header tank uh, which holds 10 gallons of fuel and both of the strakes out here this part of the whole wing here this is a fuel tank here this holds 55 gallons and same on the other side so and you fill it up through there uh, so those 55 gallon there and 55 gallon on the other side and 10 in the header tank and that so you're basically 120 gallons I think it's actually 124 altogether or 122 hasn't been fully measured. That's just what we had in the CAD uh, And then over here you've got the uh, this is the sender unit for the fuel uh, gauge or fuel level in the straight tank and then down there that's a temperature uh, sensor for the fuel level in the uh, in the tank, well, not for the fuel level for fuel, so we know if the fuel's getting too cold and we need to turn on the heater. And again, that's something we can automate later on, probably. And up the back there, those little blue hole valves coming through. One of those is goes to a pressure sensor for cabin pressure, and the other one is the actual feed for the um, air coming in to pressurize the cabin. 
So that's what those are for. So that's pretty much everything back here. And I do have um, side trim panels for everything in here that I've shown in previous videos. Uh, obviously this is just all bare right now. And there's carpet that I've got and it's already been cut and fitted in it. So, uh, you know, pretty much got everything ready to finish it off. And as I said, just waiting on some parts before we can test fly it. And it's pointless putting the carpet in until you've made sure that it's gonna fly right. Uh, so that's uh, what's going on there. So that was part three of this series and tune in again next week and I'll have uh, the final part for you. Thanks for watching.